most of the night in until the rain hit about 9.30. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to Pepsi, Fire <coughs> Industries, Bell Funeral Home, Wilson Senior Care, and thank you to the community for supporting our efforts. The series will continue with the Rick Strickland Band, which is in the Carolina Beach Music Hall of Fame on August 13th, and uh, wrap up on September 10th with John King. He is a country songwriter uh, famous for writing uh, some of the number one hits from Hootie and the Blowfish. And then finally, Level 10 Band and Show has agreed to come back to close out 2022 at the downtown New Year's Eve block party again this year. And any businesses wishing to participate can contact my office. We had quite a few vendors this past Saturday, more I think than we've, than we've had in the past. The DDRA continues our monthly member breakfast at 8 a.m. on Thursday, July 28th. That's the last Thursday of the month at Taki's Diners, 609 Pearl Street. These meals are no charge for members and a small $5 fee towards the meal for all others. And, and this is every month on the last Thursday of the month through October to allow our businesses to build connections and strengthen our local economy. We are also making plans to have a Halloween decorating contest for our businesses with a top prize of $1,000. Businesses don't have to be on the square or members of the DDRA to participate, although we would love to have them join. Businesses must register by October 15th to, com to compete. The public will select the winners through an online survey during the last week of October in preparation for Scare on the Square set for the Friday before Halloween from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. And that's October 28th. We are mailing some information directly to the businesses, but if you don't see it, it gets lost in the mail. Um, you can also download it, download the registration form at buildupdarlington.org slash scare anytime. And of course, on our website, you can sign up to get this type of news directly to your phone by text or email at buildupdarlington.org slash sign up. We promote Darlington and its businesses on social media and through our news alert system each week and reach more than 2,700 people. In your packet, you have the flyer with the Saturdays on the Square, and then you have the letter and information about the decorating contest. And it'll be three prizes, $1,000 for first prize, $500 for second place, and $250 for third. Thank you. Those aren't, aren't, aren't able to make it, don't make it to the events on the square. They've been having a good turnout. The bands were really good. Everybody's having a good mixture of all ages out there. Everybody having a good time. So thank you to the DVRA and City of Darlington and Michael Bales for supporting that. All right, uh, the Greater Darlington Chamber of uh, Commerce. Hey, how are y'all? Good. Um, so everybody should have a packet. So first and foremost, we did just recently have Freedom Fest, and I would like to thank you all for, um, thank the City of Darlington, um, and also thank Genesis Community Foundation for their contributions to Freedom Fest. It was greatly appreciated. Um, I personally think um, it was a great event. I hope you all enjoyed it if you could come. Um, moving on, community broadcasters will be having a career fair on Wednesday, August the 3rd. There will be three different locations, um, and I do have a flyer attached at the back of the packet. Um, we have um, we have had a lot of ribbon cuttings lately. First, we had the throne, which is a, is a salon on Main Street. We also had Lila the Boutique, which is a children's boutique um, on 151. And then we also had Jumping to New Heights, which is a children's outreach center. And then we will be having another ribbon cutting for um, Rush Fitness, which is near Roses. We do not have a date for that yet. Clemson University Extension will be hosting a virtual diabetes education support group um, beginning Monday, July 25th. It's a 16 week program, and also I have the flyer attached to the back of the package for that as well. Sassy Irwin Teak will be hosting our next business after hours on August 11th at 5 30 to 7. Um, they are located at 212 Pearl Street and the Morton. Uh, information to come. Covered in Pride will be, have, will be hosting a summer social on July 21st um, from 6 to 8, and they'll be having their summer sales, um, door prizes, snacks, things like that. Darlington Road Show would like to invite all business professionals 
um, to their own business after hours on Thursday, July 28th from 5.30 to 7. It will take place at the Champions Club, and so that's located in Turn 3 and Penfield. You do need to RSVP. The Green Oak Post Office will be having the Danny Cohen and Friends sing the American Songbook and Broadway tunes. That will be um, that will be July 30th um, at 6. It, then it will be at 6, and then the show will start at 7. $30 for members and $40 for non-members. And that is all that I have. Do you have any questions? Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sheila in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Sheila. second to do this. This is from the um, state of South Carolina, the House of Representatives, from uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Brent Williams, and it says uh, Sheila Marie Jones, uh, congratulations, Mrs. Sheila Marie Jones, <coughs> the City of Darlington Code Enforcement Officer and City Building Inspector, on her successful completion with certification by the International Code Council. This certification will ensure the continued professionalism and skill and performance of Mrs. Jones's job duties and responsibilities as she serves the citizens of Darlington. Um, we are grateful for her hard work and time and effort she commits to code enforcement and building inspection. Uh, we wish her continued success and send our appreciation as she is dedicated uh, to serving the city of Darlington. Um, and representative citizen tonight, but more importantly, I stand before you as an angry daughter, sister, and aunt. Angry because on June 22nd, 2022, my two sisters, my 79-year-old mother who suffers with dementia, and my four-month-old niece encountered an enraged man in the parking lot of Walmart gas station. Angry because my sister felt their lives were in danger because of this man's hostile behavior towards them and his choice of words calling my sisters bitches and niggers. Angry because this man decided to follow my sister to IGA even when she finally got away from him at Walmart. Angry because once the police got involved, this man's hostile behavior did not stop and he had no fear that he would be arrested. Angry because the police officers on the scene failed to do their job. <laughs> Angry that once my sister filed a police report on the day of the incident, she received a text two days later on June 24, 2022 at 4.40 p.m. from Investigator Melton with the Dalton Police Department. And that text reads, Miss Samuel, this is my sister, Miss Samuel, this is Investigator Melton with the Dalton Police Department. Just want to let you know that the guy from the other day that followed you and Miss Bruce 
has been arrested and is currently at the Donaldson County Detention Center. He has his bond hearing tomorrow at 12, at about 12 o'clock. This is on a Friday, his bond hearing, according to this tape, should have been scheduled about 12 o'clock on a Saturday. Angry because no one in authority cared enough about the safety of my family members, but more concerned about the fact that this man can throw out John Payne's name, the city manager, at a drop of a dime, and now this man, and now this man become privileged. Privileged to the fact that once, he arrest, that once he was arrested two days later on June 24th at 4 p.m., a phone call is made that same day on his arrest, and this man is given a special bond hearing and released from jail at 6.51 p.m. This is his report. Two hours and 11 minutes from the time my sister received the text from investigator Melton. And I have a few questions. I know you can't answer these, but I'm going to throw these out. Mayor Boyd. Is this the procedure that is followed by for all citizens when they are arrested? Mm. Do we all get to drop the name of a person in power and a phone call is made and we are released from jail? What happened to the bond here and according to Investigation Melton's text message to my sister that was scheduled at 12 p.m. the following day? How many other inmates were admitted on the same date at or after the time at 4.15 p.m when this man was and was given a special bond hearing and released from jail. You can't answer that, but I can answer it for you. Zero. Yeah. Nobody else was given a special bond hearing. I've done my homework. I've contacted the sheriff's department. Are our police officers so afraid to do their job because of the powers to be? Maybe that's why this man wasn't arrested at the scene on the day of the incident. John Payne, Mr. City Manager, is this what you tell your inner circuit to do when they're approached by the police? Just use your name, no worries. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it worked because he had no problem using your name on that day with my sisters and also telling the police department he just had officers that he just had lunch with you. Mm -hmm. I know these questions and many more that my family have that can't be answered tonight, but we will seek these answers through the proper channel. Most of you on the council, I served with you for four years, and you know that I'm not one to play the race card. But tonight, I truly believe that if this was a black man's action towards three white women and a white baby, the police officers would have done their job. And at the very least, he would have been arrested on the scene. And I know he wouldn't have been given a special bond hearing to be released from jail within two hours and 36 minutes. Lastly, but not least, Councilwoman Baptist, I want to publicly thank you so much for your care and concern that you have shown towards my family since this incident. My family and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Hines. <clears throat>
And there were other people that were locked up, didn't get the people to get out. He wasn't supposed to get out till the next day, 12 o'clock, when they had a hearing. We need to get this together. We don't want you to be labeled as a bad city manager. Too late. But right now, you uh, are. And that's yeah, not listen, good. Listen, that's not listen, good for the city of Dallas. We're not going to have derogatory remarks toward people. Like, what you say, baby? Okay, but well, that is the truth. Said, when you do wrong, you do wrong. I know you got something against me, anyway, but that's you're all right. But anyway, it don't you're make no difference. When you're doing wrong, he'll catch up with you, because God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Did somebody answer that? No. Okay. So we're suffering, suffering. Think about this ordinance again. Think about what you're doing to your citizens at a time like this. When we are struggling from unemployment, underemployment, and we are also struggling for disappearing jobs and businesses that are closing. Something that will happen. Mrs. McDowell. Yes. Um, we're not really here for a discussion, but I would like to answer a couple of your questions back okay. so we don't be relevant. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let you see. One, I'll ask you a question. Do you have power on the house? You have what now? Do you have power on the, the vacant house that you have? Yes. Is, there, yes. is there electricity on the house that you have? Yes. Right. yes. I, I'm sorry, but my hearing is so Do you have electricity on the vacant home that of you have? Of course I do. Okay. Well, the vacant ordinance building code is for the betterment of Darwin. Okay. Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? No, I, I'm not hearing you because you're away from that, and my hearing right, is you're impaired. Hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. The vacant ordinance building mm -hmm. is for the betterment of Darwin. Okay. Sheila is over the coast department. And if she goes to your house and the home has power on it, there's not supposed to be a fee or a fine or however it's late, okay? The purpose of this ordinance, okay, and I can give you the betterment of it, okay? I can give you, uh, I know two automatic examples, okay? At the corner of uh, the four-way stop at Washington and Broad Street, okay? The man was given, a, given this same ordinance and he decided he didn't want to pay that fee. He wasn't using the building. The building hadn't been used for years. He decided he wanted to give the building away, okay? He gave it to a church. The church is gonna try to use it for the home, for the, uh, the soup kitchen, okay? They've been in, they clean it up. Dixie Federal Credit Union, Georgia Pacific, was given that same ordinance for a white trailer that's been sitting over there for years not being used. They decided they don't want to do with anything with it. They decided they want to get rid of the building. They, they went in, they tore the building down. Now that, that eyesore is gone. The purpose of that ordinance is not to affect people like you. Okay. You've got a house sitting there, and I mean, you're saying it's cleaned up, it's tidy looking, and they sent you a letter. All they should do is come to you then and say, there's nothing wrong with your house, it's perfectly fine, you shouldn't owe us anything, okay? No fine. If the house is just sitting there, it's abandoned, you're not putting any power on it, it looks rough, it makes the neighborhood look rough, uh, then the next thing you know, the house is tore down, and then we're over at, at Elaine's place over there because the yards are grown up and everybody's neighborhood looks bad, that's what we're trying to prevent. Okay, there are buildings downtown, down Main Street, I can call out 10 of them real quick if you need me to, that are just sitting there. People are from inside the city and people outside the city are sitting and holding the buildings and not doing anything with it, no power on it, and they let the buildings grow up and the buildings deteriorate and look bad. Uh, there's one downtown with water in it, and it needs to be, they, they need to go out to that building, okay? Not that we want the building, not we want somebody to do something with that building because it's affecting the buildings beside it, okay? It's affecting our town. So, that was the purpose of the order. So like your home is not, should not, it's got power on it. You're saying it's clean. I haven't seen it, I don't know where it's at. Um, but if it's clean and it's got power on it, all she should say is, you're fine. There's no, there's no fee. Okay, so we're not here, the city of Dorrance and this council is not here to try um, to hurt the citizens. We're here trying to make the betterment so that we do have a, a vision of making our city a beautiful place that when people come by, that they don't go by and say, as the man drove by our town and called our town as the worst place to live in South Carolina, which I totally disagree with because I love my town. I walk into any square mile of our town and I love it. Um, and again, there's lots of eyesores that need to be cleaned up. There are 15 lots in one section of town that are going to grow up and we're, I'm, I'm begging to get them cleaned up, not to hurt the people and for doing anything else like that. But if somebody goes beside your home, and again, I use that, that lot over there, that's the neighbors are the side are fussing and complaining because the lot looks awful and we want it cleaned up. So that's the purpose of it, not to hurt anybody, okay? And again, is it worded completely correct? Maybe not, we, we may need to go back and tweak it. But again, it's all it's all in the variance of, of the city codes person. When she goes out and looks at it and says, that you've got power on it, you've got, some, um, it's cleaned up, she should say, thank you, have a good day. Thank you, okay. uh, Mayor and uh, Ms. McDowell, thank you so, so much for coming. I did uh, speak with her and ask her to please come and let folks know. But uh, we had, as a result of our sit down talking, uh, we, we met with our uh, codes director, 
Ms. Sheila, that was here just a minute ago, and they are making um, some changes to it so it will not affect persons that maintain their property as, as, as you do. Um, because so many, not only you, the, the way that the ordinance is written now, it does generate letters that would, would indicate that you should make a fee. That is being changed. As the, the mayor has indicated, if you maintain the power, keep it clean, those things will, uh, there, there should be no reason for you to get a letter requesting a, a fee. And then you might get a letter because it will make you okay, but if there's power and stuff on it, they should be the same. Thank you so much. And on top of that, that ordinance also says, and, I, and it was, I was, we were discussing in the shoe, I, I don't see a purpose in a, in a citizen should have to have lights and water <coughs> in that property. It's just it doesn't make no sense. It's just fast when the so changes will need be. to be changed. No, I don't think that's that water. Well, I don't no. what happens. That's, that's, that's the change. She, she please will come up here and finish. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. So, so the way that our ordinance is currently written for the vacant property registration is if it's vacant, period. If it's vacant, you have to pay a vacant property registration. There are provisions in it for it to be reduced if there's no code violations in it, an inspection is done, there's no code violations in it. Having said that, there, I have been talking to Ms. Elaine, um, I spoke to Ms. Backus, um, Mr. Milling has come into my office, and, and Ms., Mr. Bryant has talked to me in regards to other provisions that are necessary for our community. That being, if there are utilities, some, some council people say should be, some council people say shouldn't be. My position is this, you pass the ordinance how it is. We're gonna come in August and talk about it. Council can decide how they wanna proceed. I'm gonna give my suggestions on what it should be, if it's maintained, if, you know, if they're, you know, I think, anyways, we'll talk about it, council will talk about it, make a decision. Um, if there's no code by, this is, the, the ordinance wasn't designed to make it a hardship for our community. We do have dilapidated homes. There are homes that are blighted that need, need to be taken care of. Bar none, that's a fact. We don't wanna hurt people that are trying to maintain their property. So if you call me you, and get a letter, call. My home is maintained. I have da 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 da. Okay, I'll go out there. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Is it maintained? Does it look nice? Is it a problem? And if it's not, then we can reduce it or waive it, depending on what's going on. But the the letter is generated because it's vacant. We go by um, how it looks from the outside. We go by whether or not there are utilities on it, and then the letter gets sent. But if you, you feel like your property is maintained and you shouldn't be charged this, call my office. Nita will, will create an inspection report. We'll go out there, we'll figure it out. I have one, they are gonna maintain it. We put people on 90, there was a, a policy that I put, put in place that if you're gonna sell it, if you're gonna fix it, if you're gonna do all these things, we put you on a 90 day hold. I'm all about communication. Communicate with my office. I'm gonna fix my house. Okay, how long do you think it's gonna take? If you tell me it's gonna take five years, chances are you're gonna pay a vacant property registration. But if you tell me something that it's gonna be reasonable, then we'll work with you. We want you to fix your house. We want you to be able to rent it to someone. If it's vacant, you don't plan on living it, fix it, rent it. That would be you know, income for you um, as far as that goes sell it you know whatever it's going to take we put up people on 90 day holes and different things so that people can can get it right waive it or reduce it but we are with council right now trying to figure out how we can um change the ordinance so it's better suited to our community okay well i still don't know what four hundred dollars is for letting you wreck my for letting you come in my house okay so <laughs> that part no, 25 hours, I'm sorry. Oh. There's an inspection. That's how, okay, here's the other thing. I didn't write the ordinance. I only enforced the ordinance. So what the fees are and why they're in place as they were, that would be something for Lisa Bailey, who is the planning director, economic and planning director, who brought this to council and council. 
I can only talk to you about how it's enforced. Okay. Only comment. Yes, ma'am. If I pay you all four hundred dollars, four hundred twenty-five dollars, that could be something I could use in order to upgrade my house if right. it need be. Right. You know, rather than say, okay, four hundred dollars, four twenty-five. Right. Well, thank you all so very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, this order will need to be revisited, and and the adjustments need to be made. Yes, because we already mm -hmm. raising the water bill ridiculously. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. And the street and sanitation fee. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's constantly just <coughs> building up and, and adding more and more things to the citizens, which is ridiculous. It's it is it's ridiculous. But thank you all. Anyway. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. Okay. Have a good one.
and the mayor would say we are very transparent. We didn't have a puppy hearing. This mayor and council, with the exception of two, just voted to increase our water and sewer rates again. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that most citizens in Darlington are totally unaware of it. Right. When I came three minutes late, the public hearing was noted as an agenda item. Since when do we have public hearings as agenda item? I saw no agenda for the public hearing. I saw no presentations for the public hearing. We tried to have, answer questions. I was able to ask two questions. And then it was like, well, if you're going to say anything else, if you want any more information about what, how we're going to raise these rates, then maybe we get the police chief and have you escorted because, you know, you can't be asking questions out loud. You're out of order. I appreciate the fact that you took off the agenda that we can't ask you questions. But at some point in time, maybe you should have a public forum so the citizens can tell you how they are feeling and the financial burdens that are being imposed. Thank you. Thank you. New business. Uh, proclamation for Tony Pierce Johnson. Camera review. Mr. Mayor, as you know, family is the foundation of our community and this nation, and we get it from time to time an opportunity to congratulate a, a longtime family in this in this city and this does this and I'll read it for you and you can hand it to Lonnie. <clears throat> State of South Carolina, County of Darlington, City of Darlington. Whereas families are the core of society because they improve the overall well-being of individuals and pass along to its members values and ethics that positively impact the larger community and whereas the city of Darlington recognizes the importance of strong family ties and supports them through various community efforts, and whereas the family of Tony Parrott Johnson has given the city of Darlington two public servants, and Earl Johnson Sr., who proudly served Ward 2 on city council, and as mayor pro tem, and his daughter, Elaine Reed, who has also ably served Ward 2 on city council since 2016. And whereas the Tony Parrott Johnson Family Reunion <coughs> will be held in the city of Darlington July 15th through 17th, 2022, wherein they will again gather to strengthen their family bonds and enjoy the company of one another. Now be it therefore resolved that the Council of the City of Darlington celebrates the family reunion of the descendants of Tony Parrott Johnson and wishes them continued health and prosperity done and ratified this 12th day of July, 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just embarrassed, you know, how they, I wasn't expected to take a lot of Not fair to the public. 
No citizen should be no. called no, man, we're not niggers not or bees or, bees or anything in this right. city uh, and it's promoted by the city. Too. Nobody should have to deal with that. And the care. fact that this right. citizen we did feels not, we're that not he used okay? the city manager's name to get away with this is not right. And the fact that we, as this council, All right, resolution is going to promote this is wrong. Committee. And of course, you got a city manager who definitely, the mayor who definitely promoted it. You see how he's trying to hush it up? He's yeah, trying to hide it. They want the public to know what's going on. You see, he's trying to shut the public up. He don't want nobody to know. He's trying to cover it up. I don't, I don't know anything about the situation. Then be quiet. The, the fact that this city manager's name can be used is promoting well, racial hate. It is. It is. Now let me explain this to you. And you, and you, and you, and you. That same black woman sitting there got a black husband and a black sons. And nobody's gonna put up with that foolishness. I don't put, I put up with so it. you better understand that. And it. go back and tell Thomas, Casey Bentley, that yeah, nobody is gonna do. put up with it. I don't know and what happened. And sitting there, you can try to hide it from all he wants. But nobody is going to put up with it. Okay? Don't, don't now, when, when, that ain't, when them bullets start firing, when them bullets start firing, because black people is not going to tolerate that, don't act like this council don't know. Okay? Don't act like you don't know. So, number one, my name was called up in it. Don't call my name in because I don't know the person that walked in the door. Okay? Mrs. Bruce, I'll be more than glad to talk with you. Yeah, but the city manager works for you. Okay. But we're not going to put up with this in this group tonight. Okay? The city manager up. If that was racial the other day, if that was the other day, that yes. we have not had nothing to do with that. Okay? I didn't call anybody. I didn't call anybody. Okay? City manager has to go. Tonight, okay? I'm more than glad to help you in any kind of way. My number is 247. I help everybody. When you got a judge who's going to do a special bond and let somebody out in two hours, city manager do it. City manager do it. Yeah. Yeah, he has to go. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. And, 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 and the um, city manager that comfortable he can do that and let nothing Chief, be done about it? Yeah. 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 City yeah. manager has to go. All right, let's go. Everybody calm down. Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, I'm going to take my friend Elaine Reed's advice. And I'm, I normally wouldn't do this, but this is a weak and feeble attempt to paint me as something I'm not. I know this person, but I know probably half the people in this town. I have never, ever told anybody to drop my name and to insinuate that I did is a bald-faced lie. Okay. I did not know about this arrest until hours after it. I did not know about this release until hours after it. I don't know anybody do? at the detention center. I have called nobody. I am not involved in this whatsoever. So any attempt to sully my name based on this is lazy and it's irresponsible. I have had nothing to do with this. This gentleman, no, I wasn't there. I have not, I have purposely, you can ask Chief this, I have purposely not watched the body cam video of this because I don't want to have any connection to it whatsoever. This person, no matter what happened, deserves his day in court. He is innocent until proven guilty, no matter what people say. But I have had nothing to do with this and I will have nothing to do with this. Okay, Tom's You're talking to the wrong person, right. city man. You can talk to your friends that's dropping your name. Everybody's back exactly. up. Okay. Okay. Exactly. All right. Earlier, establishment city grants. Earlier in the year, I recommended so that you as a okay. council do not continue to get requests for H tax funds throughout the year. I recommended that we set up a committee that will do the work for you, basically. They will hear from you. Uh, interested parties who want to get H tax funds or any other city funds, they will do the work, they will vet them, they will look through their financials, and they will make a recommendation to council. In order to do that, we need to create this grants committee, and that's what uh, this resolution does. Now, if you'd like me to read it, I can read it, but everybody's got a copy. You need to vote on that? You need to vote on it, yes, sir. So we're voting to establish it or to approve it? You're voting to establish a new committee. Mm -hmm. 
I'll motion to establish the city grants committee. I mean, I'll second it. I mean, we got to do it. Very good, Mr. Scary. All right, somebody needs to take the first step. We've heard ad nauseum how much money we've spent and how we've raised things and increased things. I think maybe we should have someone like Lisa who heads this up to actually go after some bigger sponsors, maybe get them to see if they are willing to do it first. I don't know that we need to jump out there and spend the money, it's not a lot of money, but I don't know that we need to jump out there and spend it just to set a tone when we've got businesses who have the financial means to maybe do it and get it started. And that's just my opinion. I don't think no reputable business is gonna put their name on the side of a trash truck. Hell on you. Who's gonna do that? Well they may not on the side of the trash truck, you're right. They may on the side of the trash truck. But but you know it but we are doing ourselves a disjustice if we don't at least ask them. This started a year over a year ago originally promoting this, I don't know what Lisa, what the Lisa advertised or what she did to put it out there, I don't know. Did you? Did you solicit it? We had it on like, the website and things like that, but nobody, nobody replied, right? Really was, really I mean, okay, well, Genesis, I heard about it. Was Genesis putting them on the side of the trash truck? No, we might on the side of a city truck, a regular truck. Well, but not a trash truck. <laughs> I probably would not make that decision to do that. Okay, so what else do you think any rep, other reps will be this going to do? I wouldn't do that. I can't speak for other reps. <laughs> 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 if it was a bus, that was different. If it was a bus, it the makes it yeah. uh, constant route. The back truck is so, so. I mean, the sewer drain. You got it on the inside of the house. Make yourself look better. Okay, so why don't you put fitness one gym on the side of the trash truck? But that's what you want to do. I'll be accused of uh, trying to pay the regular money just like everybody else and put your name on it. Don't be on that much more. <laughs> I, mean, I, I understand what we're trying to do, and I don't disagree with trying to clean up the city song. I just I get tired of being beaten up for spending money on things right. that maybe we don't need to be the trial starters right. for. Right. Exactly. Um, Wasting money. So maybe <coughs> we can just, again, have Lisa maybe actually make some phone calls and see if there's some general interest versus waiting on somebody. <laughs> if I waited on somebody to read something I put out there for Genesis every day without putting something behind it to push it, I'm never going to get anyone to read it. So I've got to go out in the community and introduce myself and say, here's what we're trying to do. You know, what are your thoughts? It, it may be a negative comeback, but it may not be. But I think we need to start somewhere other than with council spending the money to do it. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Put it in the water. Well, so well, why don't we table mm -hmm. this since there is, I mean, just table it. And I mean, Ooh, since we did not get any responses for the advertising on the city truck, be it a trash truck or the back truck or the whatever, we didn't get any kind of response. I mean, I'll take it to our board and. 
mean, I make the decisions basically on what we do for advertising. And this is a different circumstance. But I mean, I have no problem taking it, and I'll talk with Lisa offline about it, and taking it to our group and saying, you know, would you consider this? And they may say absolutely not. They, they may well, say yes. I don't you, know. You make a valid point. Where every issue that we've heard today has been about the the, the over expenditure. Yeah, we don't spending need to money and things like that. And we're looking for others to help us. They have the city run, so we shouldn't be thinking using the money to advertise. So if we get, and when I said table it, as far as the city making that decision, going along with what you were saying, but but you can seek sponsors if that's what you want to, if you want to continue with this idea. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's do that. All right, City Square, Parking Island, Duplication Project. Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, you have your packet and um, picture by picture here of the Parking Island. There's some extras here if anybody would like one. So, so the Beautification Board would like to redo all of the Parking Island in terms of landscaping. They frankly look dated as, as they are in that kind of style of when they were put in. Um, the, this project would be done by the end of the year and uh, would coincide nicely with the CBG Streetscape project. Uh, on the front page, you can see a map of the different islands, so you can kind of follow along um, as they go along with the own town. The first bid is in front of the Veterans Memorial. Uh, you can see it there. They've taken out a tree so you can see the memorial better. Um, that in, in looking at it, they um, want to change, switch out the, the flowers to a white drift rose instead of the red, um, just so it doesn't, there's so much red in the brick and the memorial that it's, uh, it does not, you can't read it as as well. The second bed is in front of the McClellan building. Uh, this is also in front of the public walkway, um, which connects the parking lot to the square. Um, they would be removing all of the existing plants except the tree, trim up the tree, and um, add some variegated liriope, and there's a little picture of what that is down there at the bottom. And these are all going to be low maintenance plants. These are not bushes that we have to trim every year or every other year. Uh, these are things that we can basically, once they get established, they, we don't have to mess with them. The third bed here is in front of the Mexican restaurant. And we're removing all of those bushes and installing uh, four abelias and 15 day lilies and trimming that tree up. And that's kind of a picture of what those <coughs> bushes look like. The beautification board went with a, a contractor around the square to investigate the soil types, the shade, the sun, because um, each uh, island has a different had different conditions. Um, some one is completely in shade almost all of the time. Some are in kind of stress and heat. Um, this bed in front of the old Wells Fargo, they want to add a tree, a coral bark maple, and then some ornamental grasses. That's um, a theme around the state and that people are using a lot more ornamental grasses because of the maintenance issue that everyone is having. It's not just us. This bed is, bed five is there where you turn on from Cashua onto the square. This would be uh, removing everything that's there if that tree is dying and replacing it with, uh, with some more male grasses and another tree that may be better suited. The trees are all non root invasive. Well, there's also a bed, so there's some area before they get to the park uh, that's uh, The sixth bed is there at Hewitt, Hewitt Alley. This is where uh, several, uh, some of the projects for the downtown streetscape project will be done. Uh, so this would complement that nicely. 
bring that, kind of trim that tree pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been trimmed in a while to take out all those bushes and uh, plant some more daylilies and dahlias like in front of the next one. We're also sending all these plant choices to the um, engineers that are working on the downtown project so that they can tie in some of these types of plants that will work well in our conditions downtown. Um, and then the last bit is the mural parking lot where we would be adding some rose creek and dwarf butterfly shrubs. Obviously most of this stuff is going to be lower to the ground except for the trees obviously and we're going to trim those up so that you can have more visibility. Um, the beautification board has asked me to ask y'all for this funding through the hospitality um, fund because the amount the estimate they were given was six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars to do all of the work. This includes removing all of the soil that's there and replacing all of the mulch, soil, getting everything prepped. They would start getting everything prepped in August, September, and then plant in October and November. And um, based on the 22-23 budget, um, this would take up every dime they have. All private funding? They frequently seek private funding. Um, this seems to be more of a maintenance type issue that it's a little harder to get private donors to commit than, say, something larger with time. It was the time frame they want to do it. Yeah. Um, do they want to fall thing? Yeah, it'll be, it'll all be planted in the fall because now it's way too hot, but they would prep the soil. Yeah. That just needs to be transferred. Yeah. 